does cooking feel like chore? Well, it doesn't have to be like that. Listen on to discover why more food lovers need to press the easy button on everyday meals and what becomes possible when you learn how to let cooking be simple and easy. This week, we're going to be talking about why more food lovers need to press the easy button on every everyday meals. But before we get to that, the best bite I had this week was I've been re- rereading at Nigella's beautiful book, Cook, Eat, Repeat, her latest latest book listening to the audiobook version. I just love listening to Nigella read and talk about food. It's so good. Uh, but anyway, she's got a whole chapter on uh, anchovies and like at the very beginning of the book. And she talks about this anchovy elixir. And so I was like, right, I have to make something like this. So yeah, it's like, it's like an anchovy sauce where you puree up anchovies with, I use some, um, some wine vinegar and olive oil and garlic. And just, you get this like amazing umami, like explosion so definitely one for the anchovy lovers uh yeah but I was it's so good and I've got a little bit left so I'm going to have it today uh with some broccoli and boiled eggs but I had I've had it with broccoli and poached eggs which is amazing on the weekend and then I had it again with roast chicken and kale and I was just like I need I I have to go and actually anchovies are on my shopping list because I want to get more more because it's just so good Okay, so plan for today is first I'll share the story behind the easy button episode while I'm going recording this now. Then we're going to look at the three stages of cooking mastery just to identify where you are in terms of your relationship with cooking. And then we're going to look at why cooking feels so hard, can feel so hard at each stage and and kind of get go go deeper on that and then we'll look at why we need to put the push the easy button and then we'll also explore like what becomes possible when you do choose the easy button for everyday meals and then at the end I'll, I'll share with you like how to actually go about doing that doing it so the story behind this episode is I've just completed Last week, actually, we completed the, the latest 21-day, it's called the 21-Day Confident Cook Challenge, so a 21-day cooking class with, with uh, my students. And I was just blown away. Well, actually, everyone in the group was so blown away by how easy, actually, I wasn't blown away by this, but they were, <laughs> how easy healthy meals can be. And actually, someone had um, posted in the group, Paula, and she said, who knew that spending so little time in the kitchen could be so much fun and taste so good. So, um, yeah. So I was just thinking about like, I know this is true, like how, how easy meals can be so delicious and not hard and how like healthy meals can be so easy to pull together. Uh, but the rest of the world doesn't. So I was like, okay, I need to record a po- podcast episode to share this, to share this and, and actually let more people know that, that this is an option for you guys. So, yeah, I wanted to dispel some myths around cooking. So let's dive in and first first part of call is to look at the three stages of cooking mastery. So the, the three stages are, and just as I'm t- talking through this, like think about where, where you currently at in your, your cooking journey. First stage, of course, is the non-cooks. So people who either hate cooking or just have zero interest in doing it or zero experience in doing it. So you know you're a non-cook if you like, feel when you think about going to the kitchen, it makes you feel a bit uncomfortable. Um, and you pretty much, you know, you're able to, you survive on restaurant meals and ready meals and you're eating out and like you, and, and basically anything that that doesn't involve cooking. So that's, if you're a non-cook next, the next stage of cooking mastery is the recipe cook. And so, you know, you're a recipe cook when like, in order to Yes, you can make stuff, but in order to do it, you have to check a recipe first. So you can't just walk into the kitchen and go, oh, I've got some broccoli and some chicken. I'm going to make this, this, you know, I'm going to make whatever. You have to, you go, okay, I've got broccoli and chicken and you're Googling broccoli and chicken, or you're looking through cookbooks and and finding bookmarking recipes, or or you're doing both, but you don't feel comfortable. And if you cut off and if you come across and if there's a recipe, but it doesn't have, you don't have the ingredient, then you have to run out and get the ingredient because you don't feel confident being able to substitute. So that's the recipe cooks. Although, and the recipe cooks, some like you can be like completely glued to recipes on some people are like, they're able to substitute a little bit, but they still need that comfort of a recipe to, to do that. And then, and this is certainly how I learned to cook, like was by following recipes. It's a great, it's nothing wrong with recipes. I love them. I write, write them. I read a lot of cookbooks. Like, so yeah, this is, this is a, is a, is a great stage to be at. And then the final stage is the intuitive cook. And so, you know, you're an intuitive cook when you have that ability to just, 
just like you, you have some ingredients and you go, oh yeah, I could do this and this. And you like, it's no problem to pull a meal together without much effort. Like you can just look in the fridge and go, oh yeah, there's some kale. There's some, um, there's, I've got some boiled eggs. Like I've got some of my anchovy elixir or I've got some mayonnaise and you can just pull something to something, something together and quickly. And when you're an intuitive cook, there are maybe still be times where you are reading recipes and there may be times where you even do follow recipes, but it's kind of, you're just using it as inspiration and a guide. You're not like, oh, I have to follow it through the, to, to the letter and you're not stressing out about, oh, hang on, what do they mean here? Like you're just using that as an idea rather than, rather than yet yeah, following it to the letter. So they're the three stages. I want you to just pause and think now, like, where are you at in your cooking mastery journey? And now we're going to move on and explore like why cooking feels hard in each of these stages. So when you're a non-cook, cooking feels hard, of course, because you don't know how to do it. Like, and so there's a lot, tends to be a lot of negative self-talk around cooking. So that makes you feel even worse. Like you'll be telling yourself, oh, I'm stupid in the kitchen or I don't know what I'm doing. Or uh, like, I just, it, it's such a chore. I hate, I hate that it even like exists. And, and of course, when we like, when we don't, know how to do something and we don't feel good at we don't feel like we're confident in a skill of course we don't like it like as as like as adults like when we're kids we don't we don't, we don't stress about it so much but when we're adults like if we don't feel like we're good at something we don't we definitely have a lot of resistance to doing it so that's what it, why cooking feels so hard when you're in the not non-cooked stage it's actually not your lack of skills that's a problem it's the mindset that goes around it and the expectations that you have around cooking um, may not match like what cooking actually can be. So that's, that's a, if you're a non-cook, if you're a recipe cook, of course, cooking feels hard because you're just glued to recipes. Like you have to find the recipe. You have to get the ingredients. If you're doing a meal plan, you have to like write out your shopping list first and you don't have that ability to just go and go to the markets and just buy what looks good and then figure it out later. Like you have to have your, all your ducks lined up in a row. So, and that feels hard because it takes a lot of energy and time. Like it, it's another, even if you're just do, trying to do a quick Google search, it's still another like you know, couple of minutes. Even if you find the recipe, a recipe really quickly, that's going to suit your, your criteria. It's still a couple of minutes that between like an, an extra step that you have to take between deciding that it's time to make something and you actually getting in and, and starting to prepare the food. So that's, that's when you're a recipe cook, cooking feels hard because it, because you're in, trapped in this like recipe land and cooking feels hard because like, if you don't, you have to find the right recipe that has the ingredients that you have. And if you don't have the ingredients, you know what you have to do. And yeah, like you, you, you know, that, um, that that is like that has you know, cost and time implications as well, and I think like one of the things to remember with recipes is that so many recipes in the world were crea are created. Most of the recipes that we see are created by chefs or so, like celebrity chefs, or who. And if you're a chef, like you've got a team of assistants, so you are not living the real world of like having to actually chop your own vegetables. Like you've got your kitchen crew that are doing these things. And then the other type of people that write cookbooks tend to be a food lover, a people who love cooking, right? The home cooks who love cooking. So you're either a chef or you're a home cook. And the people, home cooks who love cooking, like they love being in the kitchen. So they, they're happy to spend three hours preparing dinner on a Tuesday night, like, and, and like, you know, getting rather than just buying goat's cheese, actually getting some goat's milk and making their own cheese, like, like adding these extra steps in because they love cooking. Right. And so recipes that are out in there in the world. Yeah. And of course there are some people that do write simple things, but the majority of recipes that we have access to are from these people. Like they, these are the, the, what we're getting exposed to. And so that, that because of we, we're getting complicated recipes, that makes it feel really hard. And then the third type of, um, for, for the intuitive cooks, why cooking can feel hard is that just when you're an intuitive cook, like, you have a human brain and humans have this like tendency to complicate things. And so when we uh, walk into the kitchen, even if we, we are able to pull something together, like there's this thought that like the oh, thought error that they're like, more is more, more is better. Right. And so, yeah, I need layers of flavor. We have an expectation of what is like, what goes into making a, 
a delicious meal. And so cooking can feel hard when you're an intuitive cook because you you have these these expectations. So it's another mindset thing. Like you have these expectations of what a meal should be. And one of the things that I, like I think I've been really fortunate in is like when I discovered minimalism and simplicity and I started simplifying my life um, way back in the day, like probably getting on to 20 years now, at least 15, uh, and actually challenging myself to simplify my cooking and down to you know, a handful of ingredients, five ingredients at first, and now three ingredients. And by doing that, like, of course, my brain always wants to complicate things, but I've built that muscle of being able to simplify. And so that's why cooking feels easy. So if you're an intuitive cook, it, making it too complicated can feel hard, make it feel hard, right? So there, that's why cooking feels hard when you're in the different stages, there's different reasons. So why, now let's talk about the fun, like, why do we need to push the easy button? And the thing is, like, life is hard enough. Like, we all have stuff going on. Like, <laughs> and what we eat has such a huge impact on our how we feel, our ability to to navigate life stresses, how we age, all those things. And by by not like for, by cook when cooking feels hard and we're not cooking as much as we would like to be cooking, we're actually blocking ourselves from all the benefits that you get from being able to enjoy home cooked meals. And so pushing the easy button gives it is the trick that gives us that access to all the benefits that we get from from beautiful, delicious home cooked meals. Plus, like when we push the easy button and cooking suddenly becomes one less chore that we're doing. In every day and actually become something fun. Like we get more me time, we get more fun time. And yeah, it's, it's like, it's so worth doing. So what becomes possible when we pre press the easy button is that we get access to better quality food. We get access to better nutrition, which means that we have better health, like that we have that vitality, that we feel better when we wake up in the morning, when we're going through our day, we have that energy because we're nourishing ourselves in a way that feels, that feels really good. And then what else becomes possible is we have more me time when we when we're at, when we push the easy button on the healthy meals because first of all we're not spending as much time in the kitchen to prepare a meal these to prepare a meal but also the time that we are spending in the kitchen we can because it's fun it actually can feel like me time it actually doesn't you don't have to wait until dinner's over and you're sitting on the couch for me time to start you can actually like have access to me time when you walk into the kitchen and start preparing dinner, which is what I, I do. That's how I see it. Um, another thing you can get, another benefit, what becomes possible when we push the easy button on, um, on, on family, on, on everyday meals is that we can feel more connection, like more connection to uh, the people that we're cooking for more, more connection to, and also more connection to like the interconnectedness of like, you know, our ingredient suppliers, like, like being able to go to the farmer's market and, and know, oh yeah, this is Sid. And he's got, he's got cows and pigs. And <laughs> like, that's where I get my beef and my, my pork from. Like, like having that connectedness with the world is really great rather than it just being, and where your food comes from is another benefit of, of having easy, like having an easy way to make, make um, healthy meals. And like another, what else becomes possible? More joy in your life. Like, like, like it just feels so good to be nourishing yourself and taking care of yourself. Um, yeah. And of course the other, like what else becomes possible is that you have more time for other things because you're not spent, if you've got an easy option for making dinner, you're not having to spend hours like if you're in and out of the kitchen in 10 or 15 minutes like that frees up your evening for other things or your day for other things and also like it's um it you also tend to save money as well when you have an easy option because you're buying using less ingredients you're buying the, there's less things to buy and you're having less trips to the store because you're able to use what you have so there's so many benefits to to pushing the easy button so um, so how do we go about doing it now that I've sold you on, on that idea? And basically what I recommend is just learning a simple framework for easy meals. And so I have the, a framework, it's my three ingredient framework. And that way you're not scrambling around trying to find recipes. And you have this, like by keeping the number of ingredients simple, like small, that's the best way to keep, keep, to make make meals easy because you can't complicate things when you've only got a couple of ingredients that you're using. And so what, how to, what, and what the benefit of this 
my three ingredient framework is. If you're a non-cook, it's going to give you that confidence of, yeah, I don't need to go and learn recipes and study at culinary school. Like I can, like if three ingredients, like I can do that. It's going to give you that, that kind of confidence to get in and try an experiment thing with things. If you're a recipe cook, like this three ingredient framework is going to give you that freedom to like free yourself from, from recipes. And of course, like if you want to have a cook with a recipe, you'll be able to, but you'll have this other option so that you can go to the farmer's market and just buy what looks good and, 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 you know, pull something together, which is going to save you so much time and effort. And the, um, and if you're a, an intuitive cook, like learning how to push the easy button is it like how that help, helps you is that it just gives you this permission to simplify and it gives you this, uh, a framework to, to remind you, oh yeah, actually I don't need to have three different sides for a meal to be satisfying. I can, and, and have like 20 different ingredients. I can actually pull something together that is going to work and that's going to feel good. And so if this sounds good, if you're like, yes, Jules, I want to push the easy button, <laughs> I'm ready, <laughs> then I've actually got a free class coming up. So it it's called the two unexpected secrets to be able to whip up something healthy without it feeling like work or looking at the recipe every minute. And so I'm going to share with you my, uh, my three ingredient framework in that free class. So if you interested if that's sounding sounding good just check out the link in the show notes to get the details and uh yeah we can take it from there and actually if you can i highly recommend turning up live to the class because i am going to have the secret bonus for everyone who turns up live so hope i get to see you in my my cooking class but if not i will catch you next week okay bye